Our second scripture reading this morning comes from Matthew chapter 11, and I'll be reading verses 2 through 11. Matthew, the 11th chapter, starting with the second verse here, the Word of God. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist, yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. This is the word of the Lord. This spring, I had the opportunity to spend a few days in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. Now, some of you probably know a little bit about Stockbridge. Uh, Right outside of Stockbridge, now you can find the Norman Rockwell Museum, as well as one of his residences and a studio. But also, Stockbridge was made famous because Norman Rockwell did an illustration, a painting of this little village. And it was done at this time of year. It was meant to portray an idyllic setting, a little town, a little village, as its residents were preparing for Christmas. Uh, I'm sure some of you have, have seen that illustration. You know, Norman Rockwell had quite an impact on a couple of generations. Uh, he had other magazine covers from the Saturday Evening Post that people will know. There is that one very famous one of a family sitting down to a Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, Norman Rockwell helped to set what people thought of as the, again, idyllic American culture when it came to these holidays. He did have a way of capturing the human experience. I have a Norman Rockwell illustration in my office. I've actually had this for many, many years. And it's entitled, Bottom of the Ninth. Now, out here in New Jersey, you probably don't know a lot about this illustration. But those of us from Chicago that are sports fans of a certain baseball team know this very well. It's kind of what we use to represent what we have felt for so many years. It shows the dugout of the Chicago Cubs in the bottom of the ninth, and they were very disinterested, obviously frustrated, and you could tell they were losing yet again. So I look at this Norman Rockwell painting in my office. He does have a way of capturing our experience. But we think of those, especially magazine covers, and we use those in our lives to try to say, hey, this is what it's supposed to look like. This is the perfect Thanksgiving. Or we're to set that perfect scene like in Stockbridge for our Christmas. And so often we take off and we try to do that. We try to make sure everything is just right. But that can become somewhat frustrating when you want it to all be just just so. It it needs to have that magazine cover kind of look to it. Everything and everyone need to be just in their right place. 
but, but we know that can become very difficult. Well, here in the church as people of faith, we also tend to do this when we think about this time of year and we move toward Christmas. We paint those illustrations, those magazine covers about what it means that Christ is coming. And I don't know what they may look like for you, but probably for some of us, we picture the angels singing in the sky. The angels over the shepherds, one of the magazine covers, so to speak, that we have in our hearts and minds. Or maybe it's the baby Jesus with Mary and Joseph. Or possibly you have that scene in your heart and mind of everyone gathered around the manger, the shepherds and the stair-step wise men all there. That's, that's your image of what it means that the living God has come to earth. The kingdom of God has, has come to earth. The magazine cover illustration, so to speak. But if we, we open up the magazines of our lives a bit, if we, we are willing to open them up and, and look at some of the other pages and start to look a little deeper, I think we find something very different. We want to create this perfect picture, but yet as we start to look a little deeper in our lives, we, we find that things aren't so perfect after all. In fact, as we start to look within our lives, I think what we start to find is that there's this, this fear that resides deep inside. Um, there's this, this fear that has caused us in in our lives, to become frustrated, to become angry. You know, fear is the boiler that fires up the anger in our lives. Um, There is this this fear that has actually caused us to start start to shut down our lives. We, We want to grab onto what we have. We want to hold it close. We clutch it close to ourselves. And we have the sense of wanting to shut down some because of because of fear. You know, I think we, we also need to open up the pages a bit of the images we have of the kingdom of God, of Christ coming. Because when we're willing to open those pages as well to move beyond maybe that scene around the manger or the angels floating in the sky, when we're open, willing to open that a little more and go into those pages, we see something very different. That, that God has, has, well, in fact, very interesting, the prophet Isaiah, in talking about the kingdom and the resonance of the kingdom, when the prophet Isaiah is talking about the restorative power of this kingdom, of the living God coming, do you know what he spoke about specifically? He spoke about fear. He talks about the restorative presence of the living God coming to bring this kingdom. And this kingdom would speak directly to your fear. Because when we turn back the pages, when we go beyond the cover illustrations that we try to show others, the perfect life we try to present, the way we try to do it all in just the right way, when we go beyond those covers and start to open the pages, there is that fear that resides. That fear that causes us to clutch close, that causes us to close down. It's the genesis of frustration and disappointment and anger. See, the prophet knows that. When the prophet is talking about the coming of this kingdom and the coming of the Messiah, this is what he has to say, what was just read. Say to those who are of a fearful heart. Be strong. Do not fear. See, the coming back, the coming of the kingdom. Say to those of a fearful heart, be strong. Do not fear. See, if we are willing to open our lives to the restorative power of the coming of the living God, it speaks directly to that fear that resides within you. 
it pours in directly to that place, this restorative power, and it helps you to go from a person who is closed off to one who is opened up. And see, the prophet goes on to say, if you are willing to understand that this restorative presence has come, it's going to be expressed in all kinds of ways. But if you're willing to understand this restorative presence has come and it speaks to your fear, your life will be opened up and you will go forth singing with joy and gladness. Instead of being a person who continues to close in, to pull in, to clutch tighter, to be concerned about what you have and not wanting to lose anything if we're willing to recognize the restorative power of the Messiah. It speaks directly to that fear. It challenges you to be strong. It challenges you to open your life because as we do that individually, And as a community, the joy and the gladness start to stream back. They they stream back and they stream forth from each one of our lives. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.